Hello, today's lesson is about circular motion. And we're going to watch an Ed Puzzle. While the Ed Puzzle is going, I'm going to stop once in a while and talk about the big ideas and the big concepts. So let's start the video and we'll see how it goes. We had to come up with a good excuse to visit Wild Adventures. This place is full of reasons to learn about physics, starting with going in a circle. What if I'm moving in a circle on this ride at a constant speed? How am I accelerating? Anytime an object is traveling in a circular path, it is accelerating because its direction is constantly changing. Now remember, velocity is a vector. It has magnitude and direction. All right, I'm going to pause there for a moment and talk about acceleration. Remember, in this course, we always talked about acceleration being a change, a change in velocity. Well, since velocity is made up of speed and direction, right, because it's a vector, if either of those things change, well, we are accelerating. So in this case, if we're turning in a circle, we have a constantly changing direction. Even if we keep the same speed, we are going to change our direction to go in a circle. So there you have it. Part of the thing that changes is our direction, and part of velocity is direction. So if I change it, then I'm changing my velocity. That represents an acceleration. If either changes, velocity changes. And acceleration is defined as a change in velocity. Let me show you an example. So what we're going to do is recognize that if you are turning, let's say you're in a car and you're making a turn, your speedometer might read the same as you go around that turn. But you are changing your direction because you turned the steering wheel. So you have to be changing. That's uh, called, let's see, are you traveling with constant velocity? Velocity is made up of speed and direction. So you're not really constant. Because you are changing your direction, it's not constant velocity. So it is a no. I'll show you an example. You ever wonder why you can swing a bucket of water like this? and the water doesn't spill out? It's because of centripetal force. It's a word that means center seeking, and it's written F sub C. Centripetal force is any force that makes an object move in a circle. There's more than one kind of centripetal force, friction, tension, the normal force, or gravity. And any of these can act as centripetal forces if they cause the object. So the important thing about what makes a force a centripetal force is is it always pointing into the center of a circle and that could be the friction when you're turning in a car or tension if you are spinning a ball on a string right or in the case of the bucket in the water the bucket pushes on the water and makes it push back toward the center of the circle gravity okay could be toward the center of a planet in the case of moon going around the earth right the earth's gravity pulls the moon into a circle all right so it could be a lot of different types of forces centripetal force keeps the object moving in a circular path even though the inertia of the object wants it to keep going off in a straight line so it could be this one uh, let's see, centripetal force always toward the center of the circle. Oh, that's true, center seeking, right? Centripetal force can be a variety of different forces, as we talked about over here. So all of these are true. Cause the object to move in a circle. Here's another way to say it. Centripetal force is the net force acting on objects that keep them moving in a circle. When I swing the bucket, there are two questions. The question here is, centripetal force 
is what kind of force? Well, we know that if it causes acceleration, it's causing a change, right? That Newton's second law says that it is an unbalanced force or net force, okay? It's not internal because it, the object is being made to go into the center of a circle, so something's pulling on it, and it can't be balanced, otherwise there would be no change. So we're going with this one. Questions. Which force makes the bucket move in a circle, and what keeps the water in the bucket? It's a fine balance here in keeping the water in the bucket. So what forces are acting on the water in the bucket? Well, let's draw a free body diagram of the bucket first when it's at the top of the swing. The force of gravity, F sub G, acts down. Tension, F sub T, acts down on the bucket as well. The force of gravity will act down regardless, but the tension force will always act toward the center of the circle. In this example, the tension force and the force of gravity create the net force. And so, if the force is downward, when the bucket is at the top of the circle, why doesn't the water fall into the center of the circle? The answer is the water has inertia. The water has a tendency to keep going to the left here. It will keep going. If there was no tension in the bucket string, right, or if there was nothing pushing the water downward. It would continue on off in a straight line. So the answer is the water must have inertia. It must be moving at a good enough speed so that it doesn't fall straight down on the person. And together they make the bucket seek the center of the circle through the centripetal force. In a free body diagram, you don't write centripetal force per se. You write in the specific force or forces causing the centripetal motion. In this case, gravity and tension. So what forces make up the centripetal force when the bucket is at the bottom of the loop? You can see that the tension force still acts towards the center, and gravity continues to act down toward the earth. So what keeps the water in the bucket? It's the normal force of the bucket on the water's inertia. Tension keeps the bucket moving in a circle. The water within the bucket experiences the normal force from the bottom. This force keeps the water moving in a circle. When we say normal force in physics, we're talking about a surface force. Some kind of surface pushing on an object. In this case, it's the bottom of the bucket pushing on the water. That is called a normal force. What force keeps the water moving in a circle? The normal force from the bucket. You might be fooled and say it's the tension in the rope, but no, the tension in the rope is actually pulling on the bucket, not the water. And gravity, it can't be gravity really, because if we were to do this in space with no gravity, the water would still behave the same. If we were in the middle of space and there was no gravity, the water would still stay in the bucket as it was swinging in a circle, thanks to the normal force. And what force keeps the bucket going in a circle? Well, that's easy. It's the tension of the rope. Okay, what if there's no rope? For example, what force keeps a satellite orbiting the Earth? Do you see the similarity between the bucket on a rope and a satellite in orbit? There's this center-seeking force that's happening at all times. When the satellite is here, it's pulling into the center of Earth. When the satellite is here, again, it's always into the center of the Earth. Wherever you are, gravity is pulling into the center. And it's always changing the direction of flight. It's gravity that pulls the satellite toward Earth and keeps it in orbit. So the centripetal force is Earth's gravity. It's the te So the question here is, whenever a satellite orbits a bigger body, the centripetal force is simply a gravitational force, right? Look for the force that's always pointing at the center. 
That's what you want to do. It's the tether that keeps the satellite orbiting around a central point instead of flying off into space. But keep in mind, it has to be going at a certain velocity to stay in orbit. If the satellite slows, it will give way to Earth's gravity and fall to Earth. So let's take a few circles around this track. The only difference between this and the bucket of water swinging in circles, the bucket of water swings in vertical circles. The circle we're traveling in here is horizontal. But the good news is the same principles apply. So based on that, what forces keep this cart moving around the circular track? Frictional force is at work helping the tires grip the track and keeping the cart in a circular path. Here's a good way to remember that. If there was ice here and no friction between the tires and the road, the car would slide out of the circle and keep going in a straight line. That means the only thing keeping this car from going in, out in a straight line is friction. It has to be friction of the road on the tires of the car. So here's a question. When the car takes a horizontal circle, in this case he's making a left turn, he's always turning left, 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 uh, the centripetal force is what? It's weight? No. Weight pulls downward. The normal force? No. That's the surface pushing upward. The tension in the tires? Well, I'm not sure if there is any tension in tires, but this one makes the most sense. Friction between the tires and the road. Vertical forces on the cart cancel out. The cart is center seeking only in the horizontal direction. And how about when you make a sharp right turn and your body is slammed up against the left side of the car? What causes that? Is it centrifugal force? Absolutely not. Okay, so he said your body is slammed up against the side of the car. That is only a feeling that you get because you're in the car. What's really happening is the car is making a right turn and your inertia wants to keep you going in a straight line. So if the car is going to the left and you're not, the car is going to move right into you and push you to the left. So you feel like you're pressing up against the car, but what's really happening is the car is pressing up against you. Turns out centrifugal force is not a force at all. The real reason is explained by Newton's first law. Just, Just like the water, water in the bucket, the bucket your, your body, body wants, wants to stay, to stay in, the in the same motion, motion. Except, except the go-kart is turning to the right. Okay, so you see here, this is your inertia. You would normally be going in a straight line, going straight ahead. The car is turning to the right. So it's going to be pulling you with it. It has to pull you into this circular path as well. Without it, you would just go right straight ahead. So this force that we call centrifugal force is a fake force. Here's how to remember that. Okay, Fake starts with F. Centrifugal, it has an F in it. So that's the fake force. You only feel it, right? F. The letter F says you only feel it. It's not a real force. But centripetal with a P, centripetal, P-E-T-A-L. Think of that as a pull. The car is pulling you into a circle. If this was a ball on a string, it would be pulled to the right. Okay, so P for pull, centripetal, centripetal, that's the real force. Centrifugal, with an F, is fake. Your body is resisting the change of the circular motion and wants to continue in a straight line. That's inertia. So the force you feel is the car running into you as it seeks the center of the circular path in which it... So question is, when you are driving and taking a right turn very fast, you will be pressed up against the door, but that's just a feeling. The force of the door is really pushing against you. All right, so it's not a real force. 
it's due to let's see your body has a tendency to keep going in a straight line because it has inertia right so that's why the door has to push on you get you to strap okay so let's go back to our rotating bucket of water we know why the water stays in the bucket it's experiencing uniform circular motion that's when an object moves in a circular path at a constant speed. Now, what do you think? So, let's look at this question. Uniform circular motion. Well, uniform means that we have constant speed and constant radius. The only thing changing is the direction. So we're just going round and round and round and round at a nice, steady, circular motion. The velocity is changing, so we can't have this one. We do have a constant speed and constant radius. Okay, so that's true, this one. Orbiting a planet? Well, sometimes, but not always. The bucket's not a, orbiting a planet, so that doesn't always ring true. And then experiencing a net force that continually changes magnitude. Not necessarily. The moon is always experiencing the same gravitational pull from the Earth, so it really can't be this one. So let's go with constant speed and constant radius. Now what do you think will happen to the bucket if I were to let go of the rope? What direction will the bucket move? The bucket's velocity is called tangential velocity, V sub capital T, because if tension lets up at any given moment, the object flies in a straight line that's tangent to the circle. So the direction of tangential velocity changes constantly as the object travels in a circular path. Okay, so now we have this new term called period of revolution. And in a moment, we're going to discuss that a period is really just a chunk of time, right? So if class meets uh, period 8, uh, then that's our chunk of time that we meet right for high school that's a period so think of the period as a chunk of time well the chunk of time in a revolution is the time it takes to go around once all right now so think of period as a chunk of time and period of revolution is once one revolution question when an object is going around a circle the tangential speed it has keeps it on changing direction but if the centripetal force is lost so imagine you're spinning a ball on a string and you cut the string all right no more string that means no more centripetal force what happens well at any point in the motion the object will continue to go in a straight line from like that exact moment all right so let's see fall toward the center of the circle no, because the string is gone, right? The tension is gone. There's nothing to pull it into the center anymore. Will it lose speed as it flies off the circle? Not necessarily, unless there's uh, friction or something to do that. But if, if there's nothing else, then we know Newton's first law. It will stay in motion. How about this one? Move off the circle in a tangent line. Yep, okay, we know that. It's going to go off the circle and in the same direction as the speed as it had, excuse me, the speed it had at the moment that that centripetal force was removed. I think it's this one. Let's check this last one. Continue in a curved path. No, it, it can't continue in a curved path. If we no longer have a force, that is pulling it to the center, it's not going to curve anymore. To measure how long it takes for the object to go in a full circle, that's called its period of revolution, capital T, or simply the period measured in seconds. Okay, so remember, a period represents a chunk of time. And what chunk of time? The time that it takes to go once in a revolution one time around the circle is called a period. So think of a period as a chunk of time. Let's, Let's go, go to, to another, another ride. ride. 
Recall from another segment that velocity is a vector quantity. It has direction and magnitude. The magnitude of V is speed, which is constant for uniform circular motion, but we will call it our tangential velocity, since this speed and the tangential velocity magnitude have the same value. This ride does one full circle. The distance traveled is called the circumference and is calculated by multiplying the radius by 2 pi. And it's All right, imagine I take a rope and I wrap it around the Ferris wheel. Okay, take a whole length of rope and wrap it around once. And when I get back to where I started, I cut the rope to the exact length it takes to go around once. Then I take the rope and I lay it down on the ground and I measure it. The length of that rope is going to be 2 pi times the radius of the circle, or 2 pi r, which is called the circumference. And the time it takes to make a full circle is called the period. You write that as capital T. The tangential velocity of an object traveling in a circle is the distance around the circumference divided by the time it takes to travel around the circle once, which is the period t. So this comes from speed equals d over t. That's our old friend, the speed equation. Speed equals distance over time. In circular motion, the distance we're talking about is the circumference. And the time we're talking about is the period. Notice this is now a capital T. We used to use small t, but this is a special chunk of time. This is a period. So the time it takes to go around once, and the numerator here is the distance to go around once. Distance over time is velocity. Tangential, okay, that means at any given moment in time, we are going at this speed. Think of the car traveling around a racetrack. If the car was going in a circle on the track and driving around and around and around and around at the same speed, the car's speedometer would always read v sub t, or the tangential velocity. The fact that the car is turning in a circle, well, that's the acceleration part. That means it's changing direction. So, since v equals d over t, the tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi times the radius over the period. Let's see, where is that? Circumference divided by the period. Here it is. And remember, if an object is moving in uniform circular motion, it is accelerating because its direction is constantly changing. This is called centripetal acceleration. All right, remember when we talked about the changing direction means it's accelerating? So Newton's second law says that a net force causes this acceleration, and it's always in the same direction as the net force. Since centripetal force is a net force that is center-seeking, or always pointing toward the middle of the circle, then the acceleration must also be always pointing toward the center of the circle. So which one is correct here? Uh, toward the center of its circular path. Okay, probably that one. Let's look at this one. The object experiences centripetal acceleration toward the center of its circle. Okay, no, it's this one. Okay, because here's the difference here. What's changing? Speed? No. What's changing? Direction? Yes. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of the circle that the object traces out. Okay, there's a derivation to get this equation here, and it's a little complicated. I will make a separate video about that. But we're going to focus on the concepts here. So just take a look and see that the acceleration or the change of our direction, right? goes as the square of its 
tangential speed divided by the radius. The smaller the radius, the bigger the acceleration, right? We know that because when you're driving a car in a tighter circle, you feel more change. But if you were to speed up your speedometer, right, if you are going to make a large circle, but you're going to go very, very fast as you make a large circle, okay, the faster you go, the more you're going to feel it when you make that change. So that also affects acceleration. The equation for centripetal acceleration, therefore, is the tangential speed squared divided by the radius. Centripetal acceleration is always perpendicular to the tangential velocity and always acts in the same direction as the centripetal force that's causing the object to move in a circle toward the center. All right, big idea here. Since the acceleration is always caused by the centripetal force and the force is always pointing at the center, then the acceleration must also always be pointing at the center. But we also said, remember, that at any given moment, the bucket is actually moving off at a, a right angle to the radius. So if the radius is here, see this one here? Which way would the bucket be moving? Straight down. That's a right angle. What about when the bucket's at the bottom and the radius is pointing up toward the center? Which way is the bucket going? sort of off to the right this way which is perpendicular it makes a right angle it makes the shape of an L so always think of the shape of an L see this L shape here whatever is pointing towards the center think of the velocity as pointing on a tangent to the circle it's always going to form an L so here we go pointing perpendicular to each other. So, in conclusion, centripetal acceleration is always directed toward the center of the circle. Think of Newton's second law. An object will accelerate in the direction of the net force acting on it. In this case, the sum of the centripetal forces is equal to the mass of the object moving in a circle times the centripetal acceleration. Okay, here's an example. 